about myself as well. I'm very impatient. Okay, I'm impatient as well too. So, you know, everything that you do, you have to have conviction in in the trade that you take that you believe it's going to work, whatever that means. But I think if you choose to come and learn with me and all the people that are here that are regular members, you understand gaps that you will have the conviction to do it aggressively. And um, and so that's just the way that I look at it. Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming to the open house. And for the regular people, this is going to be a motivational lecture, so you can stay if you want to. I think it's good. Uh, there was a couple of slow weeks around the holiday, and I took off. But I think this is a good time of the year to do a motivational lecture. And gosh, it was slow today. We didn't do any. So it was a good timing. How do you get and stay motivated as a trader, especially in times when there's not a lot to do? And right now we're in the in-between season, in between third quarter and fourth quarter earnings. In earnings season, there's tons and tons of gaps. There might be 30, 40, 50 things, you know, just to the downside alone in one given day. So there's lots of things to do. We're not in fourth quarter earnings season yet. We're in the in-between period, okay? Fall busy season doesn't start, I think, for two more weeks. So we will be very picky about the things that we do. I think everyone here knows me. I'm Melissa Armo. And if you want to email me, you can always email me at melissathestockbush.com. So let's talk about the stock market, which we just did talk about when we talked about the SPY and the QQQs. And that's what I refer to as the main market chart, the ETFs that I look at. But I specifically look at those two indices. I don't look at the Dow. But the overall market, I trade the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. There's hundreds and hundreds of stocks we can look at every day. And the stock market is accessible to everyone from any walk of life to trade to make money. And you don't have to live in the U.S. And you don't have to be a U.S. citizen to trade either, okay? Why doesn't everyone trade successfully? If it's something that is accessible to everyone, why doesn't anyone do it? And by the way, you can be, all you need is a computer and a brokerage account and a live platform to take the trade. So you don't even have to go into an office or work for some some fund or something to trade or become a stockbroker. You don't even have to get licensed to do this. You can trade on your own alone and trade your own money. Why isn't everyone successful? Because a lot of people aren't motivated or they fail to stay motivated and yet they continue to trade. I come across this a lot when I talk to people who are trading, they're traders, they call themselves traders, they may be trading part-time and have another job, but they're, but they're, they're not motivated. They may talk to me about the class or think about it, but there's a lack of motivation there. And quite frankly, I'm going to be honest with you, motivation takes work. Okay? It does take work. If, you know, even someone like me, I'm very energetic. Okay? I, I go into lulls myself where I'm feeling like, ugh, you know, dragging. I'm dragging my feet or my energy is dragging. And then I have to do something to lift myself up. All of these things are attitude effects how we trade, and our ability to be able to be successful and make money, no matter what it is. And we're talking today about trading, but you could apply this to anything. You have to find a way to keep yourself continually motivated. And it does take work, okay? And it sounds funny and it sounds silly, but I'm going to compare it to being a, a, a happy person versus a miserable person. Um, it actually is work sometimes to stay upbeat and happy. And, you know, there's times when things don't go your way. A trade may not go your way. You want to get in a bad mood. You want to be miserable. We all do feel like that every once in a while. But the bottom line is you, you really want to have, in general, a happy, optimistic, overwhelming look to life because it helps you be successful. I think some of the most successful people that I've ever met, and I've met a lot of successful people in the last few years, especially working on the entertainment project I'm working on, really met successful people, a lot of them have, in general, a healthy, happy, positive attitude towards life. And I'm telling you, it helps. And it will help you become a better trader. And I, this isn't like a fantasy kind of thing. I'm talking for real. You know, you look around at the world and the things that are happening in the world, and it is very easy to get down. And when you go into the market, if you have a bad week or slow period or you're losing money one day, it's very easy to get down. You have to keep yourself upbeat. And motivation takes work. Is Tom in here today? Yeah, Tom is in here today. Tom sent me a, a, a cute little text or an email. I don't even remember anymore. After I sent out the, uh, Paul sent out the birthday email. My birthday was this week. He said something. In fact, I think I even have it. Do I even have it? He said, he said, oh, that is a happy baby or something. It was a baby picture me. My mom sent me. Yes, here. I'm going to read exactly. This is Tom's text. He said, it was a baby picture. Everybody got it. He said, that's either you as a very happy baby or you've had a child and didn't tell any of us, <laughs> which I would see that isn't the truth. I said, it's me. I was a happy baby. He said, I thought so. 
You look like a happy kid. It looks like it. it. Looks like it. He said most of us never change childhood disposition. Outside influence may alter, but we basically stay the same. That was that was very interesting. I thought that he said that to me, and it made me think about adults that I interact with, that I talk to about trading the market, or people that want to trade or take the class and are uncertain about taking the risk to do it. I do have generally a happy disposition. So it is easier for me to keep myself upbeat and stay motivated than most. I think that's why I'm a good teacher and mentor for people as well. But you can learn something from this from me, okay? If you've lived your whole life not being a happy baby or a happy person or not a happy adult, it's never too late. You're alive, okay? You're here, you're alive, you're on this planet. You can make a shift. In the way that you think about things and the way that you see. I mean, everybody says this. But you have to look at the glasses half full, not half empty kind of thing. Okay? And sometimes we it's all over the place. We're in a trade. We're up money in the trade. We don't get out. The trade pulls it back against us. And we get out with profit, but we don't make as much as we could have if we had gotten out at a higher point. Well, big whoop. Okay? This is life. You may get upset, but it's not the end of the world. You have to put things into perspective. Now, what do I mean by motivation? It's the answer in sense of motivating and providing with a reason to act in a certain way, the state or condition of being motivated, or something that motivates, inducement incentive. What's the incentive to train? What's the incentive to do this at all? I can, I can name a million. Does anyone want to name what's the incentive for you to trade the stock market and risk money? Name one. Anybody. Regular people, new people, anyone at all. Anyone but Paul. What's your incentive to trade? Thunder said cash. That's definitely one. Anyone else? Ranch Trader said make money. Thunder wants to retire. Gator said make money. Everyone's incentive is make money. That's fine. Ranch Trader said freedom. That's a very good one, too. Earn a living, JL said. That's good as well. You hate your job? That's an even better one. That's the best one you said so far, Thunder. And let me tell you why. That was me. I hated my mortgage job at the time I was looking to try to find a different career decided to trade. It was as if I almost would have tried anything. <laughs> I, would have, I would have tried anything. If you told me, if you told me I could go out and make, you know, 300 grand a year on a fishing boat, you know, sunbathing in my bikini, even though I had to work hard, but I could make that kind of money and get the heck out of the mortgage industry, I would have done it. I would have done anything. I was. I really wanted to get out of what I was doing. I hated my job so badly. It was seven days a week. I couldn't take the stress. Banks weren't approving loans. I said, get me out. Anything, anything at all. I almost was to McDonald's or something like that. It was just at that point. I was at that point doing that career for so long, and it was just, just going downhill fast. And I wanted to find something else. And I, and, and I could see that my disposition actually was changing, doing something that I hated. In fact, my grandfather... Before, when I was thinking about doing it, I mentioned it to my grandfather. My grandfather passed away. And I guess it's, gosh, it's two years ago now. Jeez, two years ago, my grandfather passed away. Um, more than two years. Anyways, my, my grandfather was one of the first people I talked about training with. And, and he said, well, why, why, don't, why don't you do it? You're miserable doing what you're doing. So it was really evident to my family that for a long time, I, I, I hated my job. And you know, when you hate your job, then you sort of start to hate your life. And then a happy person becomes kind of a miserable person. And then everything upsets you. And, and I was miserable. And it was interesting that my grandfather would say that. Because, you know, my grandfather wouldn't normally make observations like that or even say them as he would. So he, my grandfather was one of the very first people that actually encouraged me to just do this thing and just give it a, give it a go, you know. It's kind of, you know, jumping into the fire, which I'm very good at doing, but it's basically what I'm saying is to take risks. Sometimes you have to jump off the cliff. You know, you have to be willing to take the risk. And you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen, okay? JL works too hard for too little. And that's for the difficult mountain girl thing. Yes, that's another good reason as well. Thunder is doing this electric electrician job for 24 years, but you quit. You quit now that you're trading with me full time, right? You quit earlier in the year, I thought you said. One of these days, you have to write your story in, in sentences, Thunder, for me, about what happened to you. So who or what gets you motivated to trade? If you want to do this, what? It might be your friends. It might be your family, like I talked about. It might be a job that you hate that you want to get out of. A teacher, someone like me, that can motivate you as well. And basically, the motivation is, is that I'm giving people is not necessarily to trade, even though I think that people know they can make money in the market. The motivation I give people is the fact is that you actually can achieve it. You actually can do it. I think 
the, the transition per period for people when they come and start to get to know me and start to actually come to webinars and are in the room and hear the calls and then do the trial or take the class and then trade with me. The transition is that they can put it together as reality, that the reality is that you can actually do it. I think people know that you can make money in the market. They see that it's possible you see stocks moving. I think I bring it into reality for people because I teach them a system that they can actually apply and that is applicable, that they can actually use for themselves in their own home with their own computer, okay? What else might help you get motivated? A book. Will had emailed me about a book. I emailed him about a couple of motivational books the other week. An experience might help you. Maybe you took a trade once and made a lot of money. And ever since then, you're like, oh, my gosh, I want to go back to that. What did I do? How did that happen? I know there's money there. The market itself, because it's very exciting, I think it's very exciting to be involved in the financial world. I think it's truly exciting. That's why I love to talk about it. Even the overall market, which we talked about yesterday and today, it's exciting to me. Money, obviously, this is a no-brainer, which everyone said, very, very true, that you have to have a goal. You don't want to lose money. You want to make money. That does have to be something that you consider and you're thoughtful and responsible about, and also yourself. You can motivate yourself. The motivation is you that you just, in general, want to improve your own life. If you look around at your life and you're not happy with it, you got to ask yourself why. Are you unhappy with the conditions that you're living in? Are you unhappy with the hours that you're working? Are you sick? Are you unhealthy? And maybe it's because of stress. Maybe it's just because of the flat out stress of your finances or your job or your work or something you're doing. It, it's easy to say, well, just get yourself out of it. I know. But I'm telling you, the only way you're going to is if you do something about it. People say, well, I'm just so stressed out. I just, there's nothing I can do. I, I can't even think about this right now or take on anything else or take on any more financial responsibilities. So then how are you going to get out of the situation that you're in? Unless you take action, you won't. And this is where the risk is involved. The risk is involved in being in a difficult position and then moving forward not knowing. Not knowing, okay? And the possibility exists that things could get worse. But when things are so bad, they're, they're, they're already bad. Do you understand what I'm saying? If things are bad, they're bad. That's it. If you're unhappy, you are. So you can, your choice is stay unhappy forever or do something about it. You can be a little bit more unhappy or a little bit more in debt, or you can completely get yourself out of the debt and actually be happy and actually have a job you love, period. I mean, when I was losing money, I had no idea when, when the end was going to come, the end of the road as far as me figuring this whole thing out. I didn't know. No one, you don't, you don't sign up on a calendar and says, oh, on today's date, I'm going to do this. And then on this date, do, 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 then I will make this much money. You don't, you don't know when you're creating your own system, which I didn't. Okay. With you coming here to learn from me and taking the class, you've got it a lot easier. And I always say that to people. I listen to people's stories about how they lost money, but I've been there myself and it was, it was an experience that I don't want to ever have to go back and do again. I think one of the reasons I took a while to get going with the options is because I thought, you know what, I'm not going through that again. I'm not going through teaching myself something again if I have to be like before. But the nice thing about the options was I used the system that I know now and applied it. Otherwise, I would have never done it, to be honest with you. I don't ever want to have to go and create my own system again. And luckily, I don't have to. But it was a difficult process. But I motivated myself through it, okay? You have to look at all the things that help you Stay motivated and you and pick every one. Make a list of things, five things that you can think of that keep you motivated every day. Because when you get down, you have a bad day, or even a day like today, you don't do anything, and you might feel, oh, gosh, it's just such a slow time with a holiday. I really needed some money today, and I wish I could have done something, and I I'm, really wish you could find a good option. You know what? I wish I could find a good option called, too. There isn't anything this week. I don't know for sure what Oracle's going to do. We can't do anything in this until it gaps. We don't know. You get up in the morning, you look for stuff, you trade it if it's there. If it's not, you don't do anything. The sound is scratching. Here, I can reset the I can reset the mic again. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Someone said the sound is scratching. But the only one person wrote it. Is the sound okay? Okay, so uh, JL, I don't know, maybe sign out, sign back in. I'm talking my normal voice. The mic is more than a foot away from me. <laughs> Sometimes 
sometimes it's a, people say it's too too low, too high, and it's not up right up against me. All right, let's get back into it. How do you get motivated? Use whatever resources you can to get yourself motivated to trade each day and each week. Having a good support system is key, okay? A trading room that has a positive influence on you can get you motivated and keep you motivated. And also having dreams can be very motivational. Friends and family also can be a great motivation for you as well. I found that this was the case for me. You know, I had a lot of friends and a lot of family that wanted me to, like I said, make a transition. If you don't have people like this, then fine. But I'm saying if you do, use those resources to help you, okay? Let me just see if we have any questions here. You had to sign out and sign back in because there was no sound this morning. Okay. Well, everyone has sound now, right? I think it should be okay. Yes, I'm very enthusiastic, Rams Trader. That's definitely true. So getting back to what I was saying, the people in your life and your surroundings have a lot to do with getting you motivated and keeping you motivated. And it's very important for you to be responsible yourself to constantly be in awareness of that. Like I said, when you get down, be in awareness that you are down, okay? Do a clean sweep of all the negative people and influences in your life. Set it up that you can have an incredibly successful trading career right from the get-go. So let's say you never did the class before. Let's say you decide to do the class this weekend. If you have friends right now that are traders that are losing and they're wah, wah, every other day about losing or trading in the market or very negative, and you're going to take the class this weekend, don't talk to these people for a while. Just kind of like take a month off from the friendship, okay? And focus and get out of that negative space and learn something new, okay? Learn like app system and be in your own positive space and work on yourself. Sometimes we have to do that. One of the reasons I have the room closed off, and some people complain about that when I do open houses like today, is because I don't want my groupings of people to be influenced by outsiders. Once you come in and you take the class and you're a Golden Gap course student, you're in my fold, I'm like trying to keep those people happy, positive, motivated. Okay? Up, upbeat. All right? That's what my goal is because it is important. I know it's important for myself because I'm leading people, but it's also important for the people that are here for me. And then there's other training rooms where people are just so negative. They're just so negative, and it's all nonsense and talk about many, many other things, politics, whatever, and it's nothing to do with the market, and it's negativity, okay? One of the other reasons I don't call that many trades on any given day or do that many trades myself, usually only one, maybe two, is that I think it limits the losses. If you can find a way to limit losses, you will make money. If you've ever think about it, and my system is higher odds than this, but if you ever think about it, if you're actually, if you have a 51%, 51% system that makes money 51% of the time, guess what? You're up. So my system is a higher percentage win ratio than that. But if you're at 51%, you're positive. So, you know, less is more. You want to just limit your losses, and then the days you make money, you make money, and it's easy. And today, I could have taken that trade in WFC and made money, but there was a chance it would have had a loss because the gap really didn't rate good. Conditions weren't so with the market that would have helped it at all. I made the choice. I was disciplined. You know, I, I can't question myself, okay? So getting back to what I was saying, stay motivated. The same things that got you motivated in the beginning, if you started out trading and you're at this point now, say you're doing it for a couple of years, can keep you motivated. Sometimes you have to remember back when you first found out about the market. When you first found out about the market and, and you were interested, you got excited. I remember that feeling still to this day. And I went through my downturns, the ups and downs and ups and downs, but I never lost sight of really why I wanted to do it. And again, a lot of it had to do with the fact that I didn't like my current career doing mortgages, and I did need a way to make money as a career. When you need motivation, you have to look at the bigger picture, okay? And today is a good example of this as well. There is 200 trading days in the year, give or take holidays. You have plenty of time to make money. With, with trading gaps, it really does go in cycles. It seems like, oh, my gosh, we've got all the good ones. Here they all are. And then you kind of have a rest period. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You just get used to it, and you just understand that. And then, like I said, you take vacations of the times when 
when it's not busy, okay? Be in the stock push trading room, the room that I'm, that I'm in right now, that I'm, well, I didn't trade today, but being in the room with me, I think it really helps people stay motivated. And not only that, it helps people stay on track. If you're having problems with specific issues, you can always call me or email me or do a mentoring session. I think in general, most people in here are doing well. And the funny thing is, though, I've taught the class of so many people that a lot of people that I taught are not in the room. I do think, though, that if you're someone that knows yourself and you have a lack of focus, you just really have a problem with that. You get kind of overwhelmed when there's 50 gaps, that the room is a good place for you to be, because I really teach people to be focused. We were talking this morning, and Paul was saying, well, he likes to do the if or kind of thing, all right? I don't talk like that. I, I almost talk in absolute. I, I, I do. I don't know, almost. I do. I talk in absolute. I have 100% conviction. The market's going to make a new high before the end of the calendar year in 2016, and we'll hit that number of 220. I know, absolutely, and no chance of failure that Baba will go through 100 in the time. Not about the option. That's the target before this date. I do talk in absolute. I do. That's rare in, in this kind of world. It's rare. I do kind of talk sometimes when I talk about things in a black and white way. Uh, the market is gray when you're looking at things. There's nuances to things, and you learn that by training with me and being in the class. But when I say something that I say I'm so certain of, I really am talking in an absolute like a black and white. Okay? But I think being in the room helps direct people when they're unsure. They're unsure of themselves. If you're trading someplace and you don't have a room that's making specific calls and telling you exact entries and exact targets and exact places to put the stop, it can be challenging and hard and hard to follow. And, and I think this is something that you have to consider if you want to trade with me. But you absolutely by no means have to be in the room with me because most people aren't. Okay. We also talked about this before because one of the things that I've been working on with myself is patience. Trying to be more patient, specifically when I'm in the options because they're long. I have no patience really for the day trade. No patience at all. I want the money quick because I know by 4 o'clock i got to be out. So I have a little bit more patience with the options because I'm taking them out for a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks. But you still have to work on this, some of you, with yourself when you're looking at learning. Okay. So for me, it's looking at the profits. For some of you, it's the opposite. It's looking at learning the system and understanding it and where you're at with your goals financially. Maybe you wish you were making more money than you are right now, but you're still profitable. And you want to get to the point where you can risk more to make more, but you're not there yet. I don't know that. Only you know that. Okay? You, again, have to analyze yourself and look at yourself and decide and be honest with yourself. Okay? Let me see if there's any questions here. Uh, the volume, I honestly don't know how to change the volume in the room. Uh, Kathy, I don't think, is in here. It might be the hot com volume because we, I had a webinar last night, but I honestly don't know how to change it without Kathy's help, and she's not, she's not in here right now. If, if, you, if this volume sounds really loud, then just turn it down a little. Okay, so what else are we talking about? What are the qualities that you need? You need to stay motivated, okay? And you need courage. It takes courage to trade every day. It really does. Why? Because you're risking your own money. It takes courage to risk your own money in the market. It takes courage to learn something new. It takes courage to get up and train the next day when you lost the day before. Okay? And this is just what it is. This is trading. But you must do this when you're learning, especially at the beginning. And you're always going to have that. Again, you can go on a winning streak for a while, and you feel like you're unstoppable, unbeatable. All of a sudden, one day you have a loss, and then you don't listen to yourself, and you take a second trade, and you have two losses, and then you have two losses on a day. You start out the week. Let's say it's a Monday, okay? You're, so you're starting your week out in the hole, down two. Now you're going to get up on a Tuesday, and there's really nothing that great. Guess what? You shouldn't trade. You shouldn't do anything. You shouldn't do anything at all. And then again, of course, obviously, you have to listen to yourself. And then when so you get up and it's a good gas and you do it. But you got to kind of have, and I talked about this before, amnesia, okay? What is amnesia? Amnesia is the loss of a large block of interrelated memories, complete or partial loss of memory caused by brain injury, shock, et cetera. When reference to trading, the shock is the shock of losing money sometimes. 
if you've been trading, let me give this an example. This is, I'm generalizing here. If you, let's say you've been trading for several years before you meet me. And this is the case with most, most people, okay? Most people are trading for several years before they come and meet up with me, some for a very long time. And they've lost money. They've lost money in the market. And they've lost money taking classes. Or in their mind, they think that. What do I mean? I mean, they paid for a class and they still cannot make money trading. So they have a memory, uh, you call it a shocking memory, okay, that they did something and it didn't work out the way that they expected. They spent money to learn how to trade from someone, someone on the planet, in a class, and now their memory reminds them and thinks, oh gosh, am I going to take another class and not learn how to trade? Even though people want to believe that it's possible or that they can. But the memory of this creates hesitancy in their mind, not wanting to take the risk to learn something new, even though in their intellect, they listen to me talk, they watch the videos, they're in the trading room. Some, of, some people have even made money with me in the trials and not done the class of the open houses. But they have this problem in their mind about the memory of something that happened to them in the, in the past about something they did. Okay. And you can come to every open house I do from now until the end of time, which I'm going to be doing less once the show starts, but you'll never learn what I know unless you're here with me and you're doing it with me and getting the calls. So you're preventing yourself from making more money unless you learn my actual system and are here with me every day. So the problem that lots of people have is that they have a hard time letting go of the memories and it is really about having amnesia. This sounds kind of strange to talk about in reference to trading, but again, remember the trading psychology, the things that go on in your mind, the way your brain works. And, and I know the way my brain works. As I was saying, I talk in, in, in like absolutes where I'm saying I have 100% conviction in something, but that I understand the way my brain works. That allows me mentally to take the risk that I take in the trades several thousand dollars in an option like I did in Baba. It allows me mentally to do it as I speak like that with with certainty, even though, of course, there's always a chance something could fail, okay? You never know until you're out of the tree, obviously, with the profit. When you have bad memories of losing money in the market, you have to have amnesia, okay? You have to let the past go. There's nothing that you can do but the past. The past is over. It's done. It's gone. Even something that you did at 5 a.m. this morning, it's over, okay? Say you did something. You got up, you got up late today. You woke up late, okay? You missed the call today in WFC. Darn it. Now you want to do something late. You want to take it late and it's, it's done. It's over. It's slipped or whatever. You know, you're going to go long it because you missed the short? No. Amnesia is very important for you to, to let go of negative memory. There's, these are all these things that keep coming up and up and up in reference to money, and that's why it's a sticky situation when you start to use uh, money, when you're risking money and you're doing this for a career, because your mind, your brain plays a big factor in the choices that you make and your emotions. And so everything has to be kept in check all the time. One of the other qualities that you need is strength. You need to be a strong, strong person, strong enough to be able to take the information that I give you and put it to good use. Okay. Strong enough within yourself to have the will that you're going to decide and you're determined to learn it. Even if it's something new, even if you've never traded at all, you're going to be strong enough to say, I can get this. I know I can learn this. I'm smart enough. I'm strong enough to do it. Okay? Any questions here as we go along? Okay. And this is a good one uh, here right now. What to do when things don't work right? Is it your fault? Okay? No. It's not your fault when things don't work right. It's not the market's fault either. It's not anyone or anything's fault at all. It's just training. This is kind of an acceptance. You have to have an acceptance here to understand what you're getting yourself into, which is that if you take 100 trades, 100 trades of the 100 trades you take, some of those will not work. And that's why I use stops and I use hard stops, okay? It's just about the fact that the mathematical odds sometimes set up to have plays fail. And this is the market. Even funds sometimes lose money in certain positions. You understand? So this isn't just as one individual. This is in general. Anyone that invests or trades in the market has to have a full understanding that there's a possibility that a position may fail. Okay? That's why you have to be vigilant with your system, careful with your risk, 
take the money off when you're up and understand what you're doing. Why are you even doing the trade in the first place? What is your strategy? And that's why it's very dangerous for people when they trade and don't have a strategy at all. And a lot of people don't. But that's why you have to learn a strategic way to play anything you do. Stock, CPS, options, day trades, whatever. You have to get to the point where they fail only a little bit of the time and they work way more than they do, okay? You can't get up in the market if you don't get a good play every day. And in the slow periods, then you take a rest. Trading and making money trading is really about playing the odds correctly in your favor. If you do this over the course of a month, a week, and a year, you will make money by staying on track with your game plan. And part of this also is about your position sizing. And, you know, if you're risking $500 in every trade, then that's what it is. I mean, it can be $560, $550, $525, $475, whatever. But you don't want to say, well, I'm risking $500 in every trade, and all of a sudden one trade you risk $500, one trade you risk $1,000, one trade you risk $2,000. And your results are going to be all over the place, okay? Same thing with your profit. Your expectation cannot be that you make three, four, five odds in every, uh, uh in every single trade, ours, okay, risking it. Some trades will go to the one target, the first target, and you're up, and there are two risk units you make. Some will go more, okay? You have to understand that not everything goes to some huge massive number, but you still can make money. And again, this is money management. I think Paul is really good at this, actually. Okay, now we have a question here. JL, same list of what percentage on average are your wins? This is something that we talked about last night in the webinar. Somebody asked, I don't know, I don't remember who it was. It's on the tape. I'm going to conservatively say, in reference to the day trades, around 70%. But there are times that it's much higher. I think Peter had tracked it in 2015, and I was over 80%. I, I recently, this year in 2016, it does seem that I've been trading less because I don't trade on the Monday. So I'm only trading Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I will tell you that that actually has improved my confidence in myself, and it has improved my ability to be able to have a higher win percentage ratio because I'm trading less, because I don't feel the pressure of doing anything on a Monday. I never liked really trading on a Monday. You have no earnings on a Friday night. So conservatively, I'll say 70%, but there are times of the year when I'm just on a roll, kind of, and, and it's much, much higher, okay? The options trades, though... I'm, you know, close to 90% on those in the call, but I've only started the letter a few months ago. I've really been calling great calls in those, but again, they go in waves. I may not do any option calls for three more weeks, and then all of a sudden there might be five in a row. They all may work. So this is, this is trading. This is the market. The day trading is a more consistent way to make the money consistently. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because you have always have something right there. Those option calls, I don't see it every day. I don't see it every week. But the gaps themselves, the 26 points in the day trading gap, I do see most, for the most part, every day. I think today was an anomaly. Today was a very strange day. I think it was very odd that we didn't have anything to do today. It's a Thursday. Thursday is typically one of the busiest days of the week. And it really is after the holiday. I joked about that before. It was strange and weird today that absolutely nothing rated well. But, it, but that's what the factor was. That's what it is, okay? You should prepare yourself for at least three losses a month. If you're taking the calls with me here in the room for the day trading. The room is open Mondays and Paul runs it. Paul prefers later plays and Paul sometimes does longs and things on a Monday. And I like to short because I like to short. That's my thing for the day trading. I really prefer to short. I, I, I do go long every once in a while to day trade, but Paul will go long many days in a Monday that I, that I wouldn't go long. And there's still gaps. He plays gaps. But Paul may not take a trade till 1030, 1045, or he might take a trade at 945, and it doesn't start working till 1030, and you have to be more patient. Yeah, I know myself, and I know I'm not that patient. So he has a better personality for trading later and, you know, calling later shut up. So he's better suited for a Monday. Again, you have no rings out and no gaps usually on a Friday night. That's why Mondays are slow, and people are coming back, and they're just getting into work for the weekend. But the room is up on Mondays. I just don't trade. Um, yes, Paul uses the 26-point rating system, yes. But he will do more longs than me. Like I said, I prefer to do the shorts. So, as I was saying, what do I do when they work right? You celebrate. That's easy. But you never get lazy. 
And I have to catch myself with this. And I'm catching myself with this too. Like I didn't do the BABA. I saw it early in the week. I didn't make the call. It, 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 it ran up. It ran right up. I didn't make it. Why? Because, because I said, you know, wait a minute. Let me just enjoy the money that I just made in the one. I don't really see the time that this is going to get to a certain number. Let me just relax myself. You know, I, I'm very on point with not getting lazy with my trading. I think the room helps me with that. It puts me to task. Uh, but you've got to do that for yourself, okay? You really have to do that for yourself because you're not running a room like me. You're not responsible for people. When you have days and days and days in a row where everything works right and perfect, don't start getting complacent with your discipline, okay? Galahad, I don't know if that's your problem that you're complacent with the options trades that you're up now and you're not getting that profits and you think every single one is going to make you nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. I don't know if that's your issue with that. But don't get complacent, okay, with your discipline and things. When you're up a lot of money, three, four, five thousand dollars, whatever, that's that's good money. Not every single trade is going to make you nine, ten thousand dollars in these calls I'm making. And again, it depends on your risk, but I kind of know what you're risking. You have to always put yourself in check. Okay? Don't ever get lazy with what you're doing. And of course, you must wait for the good ones. I'm very good at doing this now. Having Paul helps me. Training for eight years helps me. Having a business for four years helps me. Doing the options has helped me be more awake for the good ones too, okay? Everything I'm doing at this point in my career is really helping me do everything right. So what do you have to look forward to? This, okay? Using my rating system, keeping yourself under control, learning from me what I know, okay? Gaining that intuitive nature, which is secondary after the class by seeing things like the way that I called the market higher, the way that I said everyone in the room, take Baba, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. The day that I said, do it if you have an options account. You have to stay motivated. If you don't, you'll miss the good ones. So you've got to wait for the good ones. Even if I'm not here on a Monday and Paul calls a trade, if you don't like it, don't take it. No one said you have to take a trade if I take it. If you don't like it, you don't take it. Okay? You have to take it if you like it within the confines of the system, even if I like it or Paul likes it. But if you give up, you will walk away empty-handed, and so many people do this, and yet they don't really. This is what this is. A, this is a very strange paradox, in, in, and I've realized meeting people in the trading world. It's a strange. It's a paradox. It's a, it doesn't make any sense to me. That's the point I'm trying to make. So many people talk about how it, this is so hard. And they don't believe they can ever learn how to do it. And no class ever works. And they can't make money in the market. But then they keep trading. They keep coming to webinars. They can't give up the dream. It's a strange paradox the way people act about trading the stock market. I've quite never seen anything like it. It's like people believe, but they don't. They believe, but they don't. They believe, but they have a negative attitude. So they hold themselves back. And they keep thinking negative, and yet they keep trading and losing money. I think, let's say, I have a small account. I can't afford your class, but they're trading. They don't know what they're doing. They have a small account. They shouldn't be trading at all because they have the least amount of money, and they can lose it. They can lose every dime, and then it'll take them a year to get back up on their feet again. Okay? Don't get caught up in negativity so that you don't do the right thing when the market hands it to you. Or an opportunity like learning from someone like me firsthand. Okay? Like right now, like the things that I'm talking about today, which actually this is a very good lecture. People get so tripped up by the moves of the market. And we've talked about that in reference to the fake out of the fake out moves. Paul very intellectually discussed today the market in a very intellectual way, saying if it broke this level, then it'd be looked at not as bullish. And if it broke above this level, it'd be looked at as more bullish. And overall, we're bullish and dips to this to this. Again, I talk more in absolutes, but I would tell you, even if the market didn't hold the support and the spy and the QQQs that it, that it kind of made that area in the last few days, guess what? It would still be a fake out. It would still be higher. It would still trick people out, but not me. Why? Because I know how to read price movement in gas, and that's what tells me what the institutions are doing. And as we've talked about many, many times, that's what moves the market. Billions of dollars, not a couple of traders. Okay, so there's really nothing to be tripped up about. It's really actually very simple. It's just that many people don't know what to focus on and don't know what to do. Okay, so you've got to keep the faith. If you're one of those people out there and you're and you're in that paradox that I'm talking about, that strange, strange paradox where you're 
where you're trying, but you don't believe and you and you're losing and you don't have that much money and you're saying, why am I doing this? But yet I know it works and, and you're confused and every day you change your mind. And how, how can you stay motivated to acting like that? I mean, it's like one day you look in the mirror and you love the market. The next day you look in the mirror, you hate the market. I mean, you know, how, how if I said, fine, come work for me or teach a class, you wouldn't be able to do it. I'd never hire you. No one believe anything you say. You got to trust yourself. If you can't convince yourself that you can make money in the market, then how is anyone going to convince you? You got to convince yourself, by the way. At the point when I was losing and I was doing this and I wasn't doing well and I was in a hole and everyone almost in my life, with a small exception of my parents, even though they were hanging on by a thread, I'll tell you that. My mom and dad were like, Ugh. I mean, my, even my parents at one point were like, I could tell my parents were like, I wish she would. My parents were almost like, please, just quit. I didn't say that, but I could tell my parents were at the end of the rope. They were at the end of the rope because I was, I was, I was a mess. I was a miserable mess that I couldn't figure this thing out. I was losing so much. And it was in a downward spiral, you know, spiral, okay? But, you know, I figured it out. You are the one responsible, though, for changing your attitude. You are the one responsible for deciding that you're either going to quit trading altogether and just stop doing it and just give it up, okay, if you don't believe it works or any class can teach you anything at all that actually makes you money, or you decide and you're all in, okay, jumping into the fire, jumping into the risk, deciding that you're going to go for it, deciding that it's worth it, deciding you're going to take the risk to learn something new, full on. You're going to be full on in what you're doing. Now, let me just answer some questions. So let me see. Uh, I think, oh, JL was just talking about the points. Okay. All right. All right, let me go to the next thing here. So we had talked about this so, so long ago, about being a monk, okay? I, I use this as it's a good term. It was funny. I used to talk to Tom about this. When you're in that place, that quiet place within yourself every day, in your office, in your home, you know, wherever you are, you kind of have to act like a monk. I say you can be a monk for 30 minutes, which is the reason also that I like to trade and be out of trades quickly and trade shorts and be out by 10. Because I know I can be perfect, like a monk, silent, in prayer, thinking, solitude, 100% focused, knowing what I'm doing, seeing everything clearly within 30 minutes. It's very, very hard to be a monk for 24 hours a day. I'm not saying we can't do it. I'm not saying we couldn't all go on a big vacation. We could go and we could go to an ashram and we could go and we could sit in the hut. We can go in the sweat huts and we can go and we could do it and we could all put ourselves out there and we could, we could fast, we could do it, we could, you know, shut off our phones. I'm not saying it's impossible that we couldn't do it for a weekend. Maybe 48 hours. Paul would have a hard time becoming a monk with me for 48 hours. He would probably quit and leave and go home to Sherry. But we could try. We could try to make him do it. But you could be a monk for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, that's all. And that's what it takes, okay? Where you are listening to all your rules. You are listening to everything that I say because I'm your mentor and you have confidence and conviction in me and you trust me and you respect me. And that's why you took the class from me in the first place, okay? You go through and raise the gap yourself. You write down the numbers. You know where your target is. You also are aware of the fact that maybe you have a meeting at 10.15 or 10.30. So you can't be in the trade to the dream target today. If it sets up quick, you've got to be out fast because you've got to get going. Or maybe maybe you have to get to your job, okay? You, the, for that 30-minute period, you absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, can be a monk and you can be perfect. It takes practice, but I know that you can do it. it it's harder to be a monk from 9.30 to 4.00. I, people can't, okay? The days when I used to train all day, and actually there was a couple of days last summer, I think, there was a there was a couple of trades I was in, I forget, I think, I want to say ARO was one of them. One of the days was last summer, I was in something, and I actually kept the room open, which I never do, but we were in a trade, and we were up, and it was going to break again. I don't remember the stock, I don't remember, but it was on a Friday, which was so weird. I kept the trade open on a Friday afternoon. In fact, I had an eye doctor appointment, and I ended up being late. I had to move it back. And I made, I made a little bit more money. I don't know if it was worth it to hold it all, all day and leave the room open. You know, I made a little bit more money. I was up in the train all day. It never, it never actually went anywhere. It didn't even push back up against itself. It was so weak. But I was exhausted. I was exhausted. It wasn't even worth it. I think I made a couple extra hundred bucks. It wasn't worth it. So I've seen 
spent in years and years and years in trading gas in my system that rarely is it worth it to exhaust yourself or the possibility of losing focus or giving profits back they have in the morning or something reversing against you to trade all afternoon. But, you know, every once in a blue moon, I have kept the room open later, been in trades in the afternoon, and I, 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 don't, I don't think it ever pays. It never pays. Because even when I do do it, to keep the focus in check for that period of time, okay, is exhausting. Okay, because if you go out and you check your emails and you answer a phone call and you talk to somebody or you turn on the TV or you have a snack, you're kind of not focused then on the trade. And you could come back and then all of a sudden, uh, wait a minute, what's the market doing? What's this? Is, it, is there a report out? That's why my system is so great, too, because you can be perfect and you can be a monk for 30 minutes. And guess what? That's all you need to be. That's all the time that's required, because that's when the momentum and the moves are happening in the institution. If the if the stocks are going to get bought, they're going to get bought strong, bought strong in that period to get rates well. If the stocks are going to get sold off, they're going to get sold off or shorted in that period in the first half an hour. If they're weak between 9:30 and 10, if the institutions are going to move them, okay. So you, it, I I tell you, you can do it, but it's really hard between 9:30 and 4 o'clock to be a monk, and certainly not every single day. So one of the things that I think is also important is clarity, being able to see what's really happening instead of getting confused. And we had a discussion today about the market with that. It was not confusing at all to me. And in fact, today I saw something which I talked about with that gap that gave me even more clarity in what I saw the other day when I didn't know what I saw, but I knew that I saw the money. I saw the, the power. I saw that, that I saw that they stepped up and bought the market, the powers that be that that actually are buying the mark of the institution. And then today when I saw that gap, I said, oh, now I have even more clarity. And all of these things help you to move forward in making decisions for yourself. When you see something, whether you're in it or not, and it goes to work on and you make the prediction, that helps you. So again, stick to the program that I teach you. This is for students that are in here, or if you're going to take the class this weekend, and do not deviate. Don't deviate. Don't make up your own rules. Do it if you're doing this for five years and making money. You're with me for five years or more and you're making money, then you can make up your own stuff, okay? But at the beginning, it's very, very important to do what I say and follow the structure. And earlier we were talking about people going through hard times and back and forth in their mind about trading and not fully committed and yet risking their money every day. As far as I'm concerned, if you're able to take one share of something and risk one dollar, one dime, why won't you be fully committed? By the way, you are. I hate to tell you, if you're trained in the market, you've got a live account, and you take positions even once a month, you are fully committed. You're just not acting like it. So you're doing yourself a disservice by pretending that you're not because you're not taking a lot of risk and you're not spending the money for a class and you don't really have a system that you believe in. You say, well, I'm not 100% committed yet, and I'm just kind of doing this on the side. Really? If you're risking one dime, one penny, one share in the market, you're all in, baby. You're fully committed. You're in. You are participating in the market. Someone can take that money that you have, and guess that you will take another trade, and another trade, another trade. And the first trade that you ever take, in the moment that you take it, you are fully committed to trading. Whether it was five years ago, or 10 years ago, or you're going to do it tomorrow, you are fully committed. There is something about the market, and I don't know what it is. If I could, if I could bottle it up and sell it, and make it a perfume, I'd spray it all over myself. If there's something about the market that makes you want more, you may not know it. You may not know it. You may not understand what I'm telling you. But trust me when I say it, because I've been training for eight years, and I've taught a lot of people in four, and I understand the human mind, I understand emotions, I understand human beings, and I get the market, and I understand money. More than anything else do I get money so much, okay? There's something about it that once you're in, you are in, even if you may not know it. But until you fully commit and you're actually saying to people... And putting your money where your mouth is kind of thing and saying, yes, I am fully committed, Melissa. I actually know that I can do this. And I'm going to take the class and I, I am actually going to do it. And I've been trained on and off for years. And you're right. Actually, I am. I am committed to doing this. And I'm never going to give up the dream. I'm never going to give up. The only thing I'm not doing is proceeding. And, and actually, actually, I held myself back, Melissa. And this is what, I, this is what you know, I, when I, this is what I wish people would say to me. I'm just, I'm playing the devil's advocate here, but people don't. They say, well, da, 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 I'm not fully committed. That's baloney. That's baloney schmoney. They are fully committed because they're trading, okay? But they're pulling themselves back by not actually taking the necessary steps, like a class, okay, and, or deciding 
training to stick with one system. Sometimes people are training. They're like, well, I'm going to try this for a little bit. Then I'm going to try this one. Then I'm going to do this. I'm going to try options for a month. Then I'm going to go. Then I'm going to do long. Then I'm going to buy support. Then I'm going to short resistance. Then I'm going to do novice gap. Then I'm going to do this. People try 17 things over the course of a year. And then they wonder why they don't have a consistent result. Because they're not committed to any one structure or strategy. And that is part of the commitment too. So you are fully committed if you're trading. But you better start acting like it if you're going to risk even one dime or you're never going to be profitable. And you're probably going to lose. Okay. Thunder, I keep hearing you talk. I, I love that you said earlier, I saw these said earlier, earlier in the morning, you can't live without me. I hope, I hope that was a, a rhetorical thing that you said. You can live without me. I appreciate that. But there will be days where I will not be here. Mondays is one of them. Okay. And you know what to do. You know what to do. Is anyone ever going to be like me that does this? Probably not. But who cares? I'm here. I'm alive. So lucky you met me. Lucky I taught you how to do it. Lucky you came, you know, to meet me at this point in your life to quit your electrician job and do it. Okay. What if I have 10 assistants someday? What if there's 3,000 people in the training room and I have 10 assistants because Paul can't answer all your questions? What then? What are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know. What are you going to do? I can't clone myself. So the, the closest thing to a clone would be taking the class. Okay. Let's talk about longevity and consistency in trading. Trading is about consistency and longevity. And by the way, if you want to have longevity, then you need to be fully committed. If you want to have longevity, you need to produce consistent results. Why? Because eventually you may run out of money. And if you don't run out of money, you may be so depressed and so down that you can't have the amnesia that I'm talking about. And you're because you're, you're just depressed. You're not motivated. You're down on yourself. You're, you're feeling negative. And then you can't pull yourself out of it. I mean, there are people that will never be able to pull themselves out of the negativity that they've sometimes had with experiences in the market. I'm fully aware of that. I'm fully, fully aware of that. There are some people that are so negative about whatever has happened to them in reference to the trading, a big loss, taking you know, maybe five, six, seven classes, not learning anything. There's some people that are so negative, they will never make it. They will never actually be able to get themselves out of the negative spot that they're in mentally, okay, even if they have the money left to keep going. Those people will just keep losing if they keep trading or they're just not meant to do it, okay? If you really want to do this, you've got to keep yourself upbeat. You have to stay focused on a strategy, and you got to stick to what you're doing, and I do think it's, it's good to have a mentor. Do you need a mentor? No, but I think it helps. Okay, and it just so happens that I teach the class and could be your mentor as well. If you want to produce consistent results, you must stick to the plan and stay consistent with your training and strategy. So how are you going to be successful if you give up? You won't be. After one setback or two setbacks or three setbacks, you have to keep pressing forward. If you give up, you will not make it. Success means removing the blockages towards success, which, by the way, some of these are the markets and things happen that we can't control, and some of these are things that we can control, things that we do ourselves, like taking a trade on a day when there's nothing good or taking a, taking a gap that you didn't raise. So you can't allow setbacks to guide your decisions, not in life, okay? They were not present when you made the choice to train because at the time when you decided to do this, you didn't lose any money or hadn't made any money. You didn't know anything at all. You didn't have any negative memories whatsoever at the beginning. Go back to that place. No setbacks were not present when you were getting motivated initially to do this in the first place. I would say the best people that come to me that do the best are the people that have never traded before. But there's only a handful of people that are, people like that that I ever come across. I do come across them. I absolutely do. And I think that says something about me. But I will tell you, success does not come without taking a risk and making an effort. And it's more than just hard work, okay? It's more than just taking the class. It's actually having the, the, the mental thought there. Part of the effort means continuing to move forward and stay positive when you're tested and you're trading. And if there was no risk involved in trading and life, everyone would be successful. And let me tell you something, everyone is not. Everyone is not successful. Here, I'm going to tell you a little story. Paul sent a picture it was yesterday. I met Victoria Beckham. I met her at a, at a fashion, a New York City fashion week this week and last week. I met her at an event. She came out with a, with a makeup line. She partnered with Estee Lauder. I was able to meet her, have a conversation, get a couple pictures. She had four bodyguards. Four. 
I thought that was a little bit excessive. Uh, I, I, I came home and I, I called Paul and I was like, she had four bodyguards. Four. After we left, because we went to another event, and after that event, I, I Googled it. I wanted to see what her net worth was, so I just Googled it. $300 million. I was I almost fell over. I was like, $300 million? No wonder she has three bodyguard, or four bodyguards. I was surprised. The funny thing was, she put her arm around me to, to, to take the picture. So I put my arm around her. She put her arm around me first. So then I put my arm around her to take the picture, and the bodyguard came over and moved my hand off her back, like a little bit, moved it back. And I was like, I was like chuckling to myself. I was like chuckling. So she had four bodyguards around her. She put her around me and then I put my arm around her and the bodyguard like moved my hand off her back. Like I, like I had touched her too much or something. I don't even know. And, it, and, it, and I was thinking about this all night and I actually thought about it this whole week. I was still thinking about it now. Does anyone want to guess what I'm thinking in my mind? Because I'm going to relate this to myself, which will help you of the sentence that I just said here and the whole lecture here today. Does anyone even want to guess what I'm going to say? Can you even have a clue? I'm not talking about Victoria Beckham. I'm talking about the, 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 I'm talking about in general what I was going to say about what just happened. Like, what could you, not knowing me, which some of you don't, what would you think that I would have in that experience? Koala, what would you think? <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself. She put her arm around me. No, that's not what I was thinking. No one had any clue about what I was going to say. Not even a guess that I would be offended by the bodyguard. I actually thought it was amusing. I, I I thought it was I thought it was amusing actually because obviously I mean look at me. The beast trader is saying that I wouldn't want to be that rich that would require four bodyguards. Beast trader, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard you say. <laughs> Wrong. Next. <laughs> for bodyguards, but I ought to be as rich as possible, infinite. Now, guess again. Ashley thinks I should have hugged her. <laughs> Want to be like her? No, but close. Somebody's getting there. Someone's getting there close. Needing the guards? Close. All right, I'm going to tell you. It made me think. Okay, now just listen. This is very important. I know some people find out because we're late here. We're way, way late. But I, and I started early. Gosh, we'd be here till one o'clock if I had started on time. It made me, it made me feel motivated. It made me feel so motivated. Not that I'm dreaming of having four bodyguards. Okay, although I'll, I'll be fine with that. I'll give me ten. I'm telling you that it really motivated me. It's not like I have never lost motivation for being hugely successful, okay? But it, it, it's, it's very interesting. I do a lot of things in New York, and I meet a lot of people. And that was an experience. So when I meet super wealthy people, um, it, it's, it's an experience, okay? So I, I met someone super wealthy, and the experience is what? It, it says to me, okay, you know, what is the difference? There is a massive difference between, you know, being successful and doing well or being super wealthy. It's like night and day, okay? It's just like it's night and day for people that are losing in the market to make the transition to be making a living. It involves risk and effort, and a lot of that is mental. And, yes, financial, too, which means paying money for a class, putting money in a trading account. Going through your hard knocks to get there. It's night and day. The idea of doing very well, which I do, and then having four bodyguards and being worth 300 million, you know, I'm like, who? You know, it's a different level. And it's like the same people that are doing a job they hate, barely making ends meet, losing money in the market, and then want to be successful where they can be self sufficient. And make several hundred dollars, a hundred thousand dollars a year doing only trading, quitting their day job, which they hate, and not being stressed out. It's 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 it, it, it's a lot different. So no one said that it had to be hell in a hand bucket and hard. That was what I went through when I created the system. But it definitely is going to involve work. It definitely involves risk. 
it's, you know, it definitely involves effort on your part, okay? One of the things I talked about with Kathy last night, because I had a webinar, people just love going to these online Trader Central webinars about uh, automated systems. And, and Paul and I were laughing about it because we're because we were like chuckling like two little kids in the phone because we know that automated systems don't work. No automated system works, or everyone would have it, and yet people love them. Why? Why do people love automated systems? Which I will never sell because it's impossible to do it. And it just is impossible, and they don't work. But why do people love them? Anyone want to guess? It motivated me, Journey Woman, to see the super wealthy because I realized that it's, that, that it's possible. That's, that's where I'm headed. That is something that, that is far, it's going to take work. It's going to take work. It's going to take more work than I've been putting into my own trading and my business and everything else with the television show. That it's, it's going to take work. It, it, it just takes work. You want to get to that level and be worth, uh, you know, three four hundred million dollars, and you got to you got to do the work. And I don't need to. I think that's the difference. No one's forcing me up against the wall to tell me that I need to make, you know, half a million dollars a year. Um, it's just something that, to myself, or I mean, a half a billion dollars a year. It's something that, to myself, I have huge goals that I want to be a billionaire. So if you go through steps, it's a process. It's not like you wake up one day. And you're making a million dollars, and the next year, then you're worth 300 million. It doesn't go like that, you know. Unless you're Kim Kardashian and you have a, a sex tape that goes viral, you know, one one year you're worth nothing, and the next minute you're worth 78 million. That's just not realistic. You don't go from being successful and doing very very well to all of a sudden making 500 million dollars a year overnight. It doesn't happen. And that was that was the thing that I was thinking about. So the motivation of, of being in that and meeting super wealthy people is that, yes, I do want it. Yes, I do. Okay. And it's going to involve work. It's going to involve work, and you've got to go through the process to get there. And this, I'm, I'm relating this to you, though, because it's the same thing. It's the same thing, except for I should be a better example for you. I should be a shining example for you because I don't need it. I don't need to put myself out there to do this or do all this stuff. And sometimes you hear that in my voice when I talk or do things and I run into crazy people that are in webinars or whatever, or whatever it may be. If I have a very nice life. If this was my life for the rest forever and ever 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 and ever, I couldn't complain a wink. In fact, one of the secure of the concierge the other day said, I heard, he didn't say it to me. He said it, he said it, someone was, he was buzzing someone up to see me and he said it to my friend that was downstairs. He said, Mom, Melissa, she's a perfect life, she has no problem. I kind of chuckled and I thought, really? People, people do think I have the perfect life and people really do think I don't have any problems. That's not true. I still have problems like everybody. I had stress that comes up or things or whatever. That's not true. If I was worth 500 million, I'd still have problems too. Say that you never have problems, that's not true. But people think that. But the reality is that I don't need to put myself out there to do even more, but I want to. I want to. I want to. But some of you are in positions in life where you actually need to put yourself to do something more because you're absolutely miserable and you can't go on the way that you are. And that's where I was eight years ago. Do you understand? That's where I was eight years ago. I couldn't go on doing the mortgage job I was doing anymore. I was making less money and I was absolutely miserable and I couldn't go on like that anymore. I couldn't live. I could not live like that anymore. I had had it. Now I'm pushing myself to do something that I don't even you know, I don't even need to do, but I'm motivating myself to do it. So I should be a shining example where you can motivate yourself to do something that you have to do or something that you just want to do. Both are validly equal, the, the same, both are equally valid, okay? But I'm telling you that people that are in situations where they have to do something better get their butts moving. They gotta get their butts moving and work a lot harder than me, even though I have to work really hard. Because to be worth five hundred million or half a billion dollars is a hell of a lot of money and way different than being a normal person. So the reality is, think about where you are. Okay? You can be happy where you are and still have goals to get motivated to do it. But if you are miserable where you are and you're not happy where you are, then you gotta get your butt moving. Okay. Okay, JL. Okay, email me. Let me just give you other comments here. The Ronto effect. I don't know what that is, Koala. Set it and forget it. That's, yeah, people that are worth $500 million don't have to work. You're absolutely right. Never have to work again. Let me just see if I missed any other comments. It, it, it motivated me, Journeyman, as, as Journeyman was saying, it motivated me because of the fact that 
I realized that to get to that point, it's going to be more work than I thought. Let's put it that way. More work than I thought. That there's that there's not a lot of people that have lifestyles like that. Okay. I did see people when I was in Cannes, when I was in France last year, it was a year ago now. I, I was on the beach and there were bodyguards that were that were around people that were there with bodyguards were on the beach. Not four, but but I saw them up around. There was women. It was it was some girls. It probably was their father had bodyguards. I don't know if they were sheiks or whatever. So there were bodyguards around people on the beach in France, away from the beach a little bit, but they were watching the people that were there that had bodyguards in the beach at the hotel. So that was the first time I saw that. And every once in a blue moon, I see that with people that are in uh, Bird of Goodman. But to have someone touch me that was a bodyguard and move my hand away from the person, I, I chuckled to myself and I thought, oh, it, it makes you're like, oh, this is real. This person has four bodyguards and their job is to protect her, even, even from someone like me, which obviously, look at me. I mean, come on. So it was very interesting. It's a different life. And I guess it's a life that I want, not necessarily that I have to have four bodyguards, but that I want to be way more successful than I am now. And I have the ability to do it. And you have the ability to do what I can teach you to. If you don't believe that you do, get over it. You will never know until you actually take the class how good my information is. You will never know that you can actually make six figures of your trading until you actually do it either. Nobody knows. Nobody knows anything at all. You can say blah, 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 but I think you need to think a little bit like I do if you want to get off your butt and think in absolute. In other words, if I don't do this, my life's going to be miserable forever. What am I waiting for? The possibility exists that I could do something and change my life for the better right now, today, this weekend, or I can think about it a little bit longer. I can wait until 2017. I can wait till 2018. I can wait till 2020. I can wait until Melissa says it's the last class I'm ever doing because I'm worth $500 million and I don't need to do anything ever again. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, here, this is a good picture. The cheese stands alone. What's the cheese? I don't know. It might be Victoria Beckham with her four body <laughs> But all I'm saying is that that cheese is worth going after. The cheese is something that you want. If the cheese is you want to go into the market and make money every day, what is it going to take? You, you got to put your armor on. You put your warrior helmet on and you go for the cheese or you, you just get the scrap, you know, and we're all worth more than that. We're all, we're, we're all worth enough to be, to be part of that super wealthy. I don't know if you desire that or not, but we're darn well worth enough to be able to have happy existences and good lives. We don't have to stress out when we sleep at night about losing our job or being miserable with what we're doing or not being able to pay our bills. Every one of you here is good enough to have the life that you deserve, whatever it is. I don't know what that is for you, but you got to decide what it is and you darn well have to know it. And if that means that you're going to have to take a risk to do something like trading to make it happen, so what? So what? Some of, some of this involves, like we were saying, the mental perseverance and the fortitude. Strength. The strength is really is the strength in your mind. Uh, we're talking about the automated systems. Yes, that's what we're talking about. The, the, the automated systems that I was laughing about because of the fact that Kathy said, oh, my gosh, we do so many webinars for the automated system. Because people, guess what? They're doing the automated systems and they love to buy them. Why? Because they don't have to think. They don't have to think. They don't have to think at all. They can just go, yeah, the system did a beep. I get so many people that tell me, do you have a this? Do you have a that? Do you have an alert system for the trades in the room? No, how the heck would I have time to even, even if I said, I absolutely love WFC, which I didn't say this morning, but the trade worked out. Even if I get up in the morning at 8 a.m. and said, I love this. Let's say I said it last night at 4.30. I don't know when it got. I don't know if it was last night or this morning. Let's say I said, oh, WFC, this is a good one. Do, 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 at 4.30 last night. What if I get up in the morning at 8 o'clock and look completely different? What if it looked like crap? Then what if by 9 o'clock it looked great? It looked great again. And then what if by 9.28 it looked terrible and then it never stood up and we didn't do it? How can I even have an alert system or an automated system? You can't. Because by the everything it changes. This is live time, live trading. Guess what? Sorry to tell you, you have to use your brain. And why wouldn't you want to? Why wouldn't you want to? Why wouldn't you want to? You need it, okay? You need to use your brain. No automated system that exists in the planet is better than my brain to read gaps. My brain, okay? So what do you want to do? Use your brain and have your brain and teach your brain to think like mine and read charts like mine. That's what your job is, okay? Because I am able to make good predictions using gaps and my gap method and the 26 points looking at charts, you want to use your mind to do the same thing as well. Your mind works and you need to use it. 
Okay. So let's talk about trading is power. What is it in the power of the market, the power of the gap, the power of the golden gap system, which is what I've been talking about in between here today. This is a motivational lecture. And the power of conviction, the power of the information, the power of knowledge, but the power is you. You are the one responsible whether or not you make it or not. My system works. It works for me. It works for other people I've taught. So if you win or lose, in the end, it's really up to you. You are in charge. If you're doing something that doesn't work, then you're the one that is actually making the choice to continue to do that thing. No one is holding you back but yourself, okay? I kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday with Jean because he called me because I gave a lecture yesterday and then we started talking about spirit and intuition a little bit. The power of the human spirit is the power within you. You are one with this power. Your human spirit is so powerful. You have the power within yourself to follow a disciplined trading plan, make money in the market, and keep yourself motivated during personal setbacks, which everyone has, okay? You can control your destiny by making a choice in your spirit not to allow anything to stand in your way of trading success, okay? It's called intention as well. It's the power of intention. You're putting them out there that you're going to take the risk, and by golly, it's going to be worth it. When you have a clear vision, clear intention, and a plan of action in place, you can use the power of intention to assist you in creating the training results you desire. Get clear. Intentionally works with complete clarity and focus. And this is the caveat. Some people don't have it, as we, we, we talked about. You're 100% fully committed as soon as you take one trade in the market. You're all in. But if you are not saying you're all in and taking every action to make it so, then you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot, so to speak. Focus on one or two stocks. Focus on one strategy. Focus by being in the stocks with training room with me and doing the class. All of these things will help you get and stay clear and motivated. But you've got to have a plan of action. What is it? Doing my class? Do another class? I don't know. But I know you have to have a strategy. If you are training and don't have a strategy, you need to take a break. You must have a proven strategy and a system that works in order to make money trading, or you will not make it. And you absolutely must follow this plan to achieve success, okay? So here's the information about the class this weekend if you are in here for the open house or you're new. The class is Saturday and Sunday, September 17th and 18th from 9 to 5 Eastern time. Cost of class is $49.99, and retakes are free. You can be anywhere in the world and take the class, which is great, okay? Now, let me just see the other questions here. I really went on a long lecture today, but I think this is a good one. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I'm a rock star. Thank you. You told people at your old job that you recently retired is, is because of the sock swoosh. Oh, thank you, Thunder. You can make your daily goal of $1,000 a day. Great. Why people are attracted to trading systems is to set it and forget it. Yeah, right. But then you're not using your brain. You're not using your brain. So, I mean, this is the point I'm trying to make. It's actually good to use your brain. Ashley is begging me for an option call. I don't have any right now, Ashley. And I just got done talking about this, about being disciplined. I can't make it up. I can't make up something and say, do, to do, to do, if there isn't something there. Apple's already made the move. I don't see anything in Apple. It's rallied up for, you know, for the last week. Any questions from anyone at all? New people, old people? Good to see some old people back in here for the open house. I don't know what we'll get tomorrow. I will wait and see what Oracle does. All right, thanks for staying, everyone. Okay, have a great day. I will see you tomorrow.